If you want to skip the whole turkey for your holiday dinner and instead cook a turkey breast, well, I've got an amazing turkey wellington recipe for you. Welcome to the salted pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe, I'm gonna say, is easy, but it does have a couple steps. So I wouldn't necessarily call it real simple, but it is absolutely amazing and it's a beautiful presentation for a holiday dinner or a special occasion. Definitely worth the time, let me tell you. All right, so I bought a boneless turkey breast um, from the grocery store. They come in a, like they say they're three pounds and it doesn't, there's different brands and stuff. So I'm not gonna get into that. You can buy whatever brand that you like. Um, but they come in like a little roll like this and they're in netting. And they also come with a gravy packet. The turkey breast itself is probably about two pounds because they actually weigh the gravy packet, just so you know. So it says three pounds on the label, but it's really not always three pounds. So plan for it to be somewhere between two and three pounds, okay? But then, and talk about being upset, I literally almost cried. So after testing the recipe once, I went and bought another two turkey breasts to finish testing the recipe. And I opened them up and they're in pieces. So the first one I got was a complete turkey breast that I was able to slice and stuff and then go on with the recipe. But then the other two were just in three different pieces. And I was like, what am I gonna do? Anyway, I made it work and it's a little bit different of a process. Now I have two new turkey breasts. I do not know I haven't opened up the netting, although I have a suspicion just the way this one's shaped that it's in pieces. I'm hoping this one is uh, full so I can show you both techniques, but we are gonna roll with whatever I have under this netting. So let's go ahead and open them up and find out. This is the one I'm pretty sure has the, has it in pieces, just the way it looks, but who knows, might be surprised. Now, when you're roasting a turkey breast and you're not doing it um, this way, like, well, that is really in pieces. Oh my goodness. Um, and you're not doing it like I am, okay? You leave the netting on. That holds it all together. And, and I guess that's why they can get away with putting it in pieces. Now let's see. Now this is not in a piece, okay? So this actually will work. And you could roast this up for a turkey salad or something. But I'll probably try to incorporate that with this if this one isn't in pieces. So let's just keep going. Let's find out. And if neither one of these are in pieces, then there's a good chance you won't get one in pieces either. But I do have one in the freezer that is in pieces, so uh, I will definitely show you how to do it, just in case you unwrap yours and it is in pieces. This one is not in pieces, but it is kind of a hot mess, right? Oh my goodness. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how to do it no matter what kind of turkey breast you have. First thing we wanna do is slit this one. I'm gonna consider this one a whole turkey breast. Okay, I'm gonna forget about this piece for this uh, recipe. And I'm gonna slice it and then stuff it. This one, we're gonna have to do a little bit more to. So what I'm gonna do just for the sake of the video is put it into three different pieces. So let me do that first here. Because that's how they, I mean, I guess they're gonna come all kinds of different ways. But let's see what we can do here. First of all, you do not need the skin for this recipe, but you might want to keep it if you wanna make a little pan gravy, which I will show you at the end of this video how to do that. It's very delicious. Okay, so remove that. Let's see can't believe how different these are. My goodness. All right, so if your turkey breast looks like this, which is just kind of open in the center and, and would not slice and stuff very easily, what I would do is cut it right here, and then I would cut this in half. And I would also cut this in half. This is sort of similar to what I would do if I had one that was totally intact, like that other one. So kind of butterfly it a little bit. 
just like that. All right, so that would be the basic preparation before we stuff it, okay? Now, let me clean up here because we're gonna make up the stuffing. No matter which kind of turkey breast you end up with, you're gonna make the same stuffing and it's an apple stuffing with a little bit of breadcrumbs. It's absolutely delicious, very simple to make. All right, to make up the stuffing, you want a half of a cup of plain breadcrumbs. Now, you could certainly use Italian breadcrumbs or something like that and then kind of adjust your seasonings, or you could even do nuts. So if you wanted to avoid the gluten, just do um, about a quarter to half of a cup of like chopped pecans or chopped walnuts. That would be absolutely delicious. I like to use the breadcrumbs though because it does absorb some of the liquid from the fruit that we're gonna use, but I think you'd be fine with using nuts instead. Then we want a half of a cup of cranberries. Those are fresh cranberries that were actually frozen from last year and just thawed and put in. You want one apple, which will be about a cup of apple. And you can leave the skin on or you can take it off. That's totally up to you, whatever you like. You want them in kind of small dice. Mine's got a little bruise here. Just gonna chop that right off. All right, there we go, the apple is in. I'm using a gala apple, but you can use any type of apple that you want. Then we're gonna put in our seasoning blend, which is pretty simple. Quarter teaspoon of thyme, quarter teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, half of a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt or kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And just sort of mix that up there. And then I like to just take some parsley and just put that in as well. You can chop it, you can just break it, tear it, whatever you want, it's perfectly fine. Or you can put other herbs in there if you like. I mean, you can get real creative. You could put some mint in there if you wanted. You could use pears instead of the apples. I mean, really, you can make any kind of stuffing that you like. Or you could do a traditional bread stuffing too. So whatever you like is fine. The rest of the turkey wellington, the you know, the steps are exactly the same no matter what you use as um, as a stuffing. So it doesn't really matter. You're going to need probably about a cup to a cup and a half of stuffing. And then I add in two tablespoons of olive oil. And what that does is sort of moisten the breadcrumbs and allow everything to kind of come together. Makes it easier to stuff the turkey, okay? Makes it hold together a little bit. It smells so amazing. All right, give a good stir and now we are ready to stuff our turkey. All right, so if you're lucky enough to get a whole intact turkey breast, then you still wanna remove the skin, so we don't need that for this recipe. I don't recommend leaving it on either because it's not going to render the way that we're gonna cook this, and it's just gonna be, a, you know, like a fatty, chewy mess. So don't, um, don't be tempted to leave it on. It's not gonna work out well for you. Now, if you want crispy turkey skin though, you can absolutely take this and season it up with some, you know, whatever seasonings you like or just salt and pepper and you can air fry it um, to be like the crunchy turkey skin. That might be kind of cool to serve alongside your turkey wellington. All right, so we get that off. And now the turkey breast, what you're gonna do, now mine's open here a little bit, so I'm gonna go from this side, but normally, if it's all intact, I usually go from this other side, but use your judgment in that, it's not gonna make much of a difference. All right, so this is pretty well intact, okay? Pretty well. Now we wanna butterfly it so that we can stuff it. And I'm gonna pay attention here, since this is a little thicker and this gets a little bit thinner as it goes down here, I'm gonna pay really close attention to the way that I cut this. I'm gonna get right about there. You just wanna have the stuffing as close to the middle of the turkey uh, breast as possible. And that'll also help everything kind of cook through pretty evenly. It's 
just go ahead and butterfly it until you can kind of open it up. You want to cut down as far as you can. So kind of feel and make sure you can feel your finger on the other side. That's gonna, number one, allow you to have a little bit of the stuffing in every bite, and it's gonna just make it a little bit easier. Okay, now we pile on that stuffing and then we're gonna get it wrapped in sausage. So let me go ahead, pull this over here. All right, stuff as much of that stuffing in as you can and kind of fold it back over, all right? And just stuff it in there, really. Because <laughs> we're gonna roll this in sausage anyway, so. First thing you wanna do is have a flat, clear surface, okay? And put down about 20 inches or so of cling wrap. And the cling wrap is kind of important. You can use parchment paper, but it slides all over the place and it makes it a little bit more difficult. The cling wrap also is very important if you're going to, if your turkey came in pieces, like I'm going to show you next, and you have to kind of put it all back together. The cling wrap is essential for that, but it's helpful even if you have an intact turkey breast because it makes it much easier. It doesn't slip on you. And I like to do about two of them and I overlap them a little bit. So you want something that's a little bit bigger than like, let's say 16 by 20. So you want just a little bit bigger than that because we want to roll our sausage out to about 16 inches by 20 inches so that it wraps around our turkey. All right, so the next step is to get your sausage. I'm using breakfast sausage. This is just a mild sausage and it is thawed, obviously. You could use any sausage you want. You could use maple sausage, you could use hot sausage, sweet sausage, any kind, but you want it out of the casing, okay? And we're gonna kind of combine this together so it makes one big lump of two pounds of sausage. Now, I've tried this recipe with one pound and it will work, okay? It will work. So if you wanted to cut down on the sausage, you absolutely can. It's just a little bit harder to roll, so I decided to go with the two pounds because you can get it thin enough and big enough to wrap around the turkey without being so thin that it cracks and breaks. But, like I said, I've done it with one pound and it does work. It just takes a little bit more maneuvering. All right, next grab two pieces of parchment paper, roughly the same size as your cling wrap and place them down on the counter. This is going to help, and if you've got curled edges, put the edges down so they don't curl up like this is. This is gonna protect the uh, rolling pin from getting the sausage stuck all over it. So it is kind of important that you do that. You could do it between two layers of cling wrap, but I prefer the parchment paper. You also wanna make sure your sausage is very cold. So this is not a recipe where you would wanna bring your sausage out to room temperature. You can bring your turkey breast out, you know, about a half an hour to an hour before you cut it, but you don't wanna do that with your sausage. And then we just roll it, starting in the middle and roll it up and out until it is thin enough and big enough to wrap around our turkey. Once you get it rolled out this way, about 16 or 20 inches, because it doesn't matter which side you do which way. Now we're gonna go the other way. All right, that looks good. Now, Jeff just said, it looks like the size of a large pizza. And guess what? Yes, it would be the size of a large pizza or thereabouts, because this large pizza is 16 inches usually. All right, the last thing I do before I wrap the turkey and the sausage is use a little bit of salt and pepper. How much you use is completely up to you. You don't need a lot because we've got seasonings inside in the stuffing, the sausage is well seasoned, but I do like to just sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper over the um, outside of the turkey. I have a half of a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. All right, that's what it looks like. Now we are going to move the turkey over to our sausage. 
The way you position your turkey on your sausage rollout, that's what I'm gonna call it, sausage rollout, will depend on how you cut it, okay? If it's in three pieces, it's gonna be a little bit different. If it's really neat and all together, you can put it on any way you want. Mine has a little bigger opening on one side, and that is where I'm gonna put it down, okay? Onto the sausage. So where the slit is, is where I'm gonna put it down like that onto my sausage, okay? And kind of tuck in anything that falls out. Now this might seem counterintuitive. You're probably like, what are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. It does though, okay? Because what happens is your sausage, when you roll out sausage, usually it's thickest right in the middle, okay? And it's also completely intact. Okay, it's completely one sheet. It's gonna cover easier if your opening is on the bottom. When you bring up these sides, you're gonna be kind of pushing it together and piecing it all together. And it doesn't cover the turkey breast as well. So by putting it slit side down and you know going in and just stuffing in that turkey, you're gonna have it hold together better. Okay, now, now that we've done that, we can roll up the sides. Now, you can go from the bottom or you can go from one of the sides. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go from the bottom here. Roll up and then gently remove the cling wrap here. If any is sticking, that just means your sausage got a little bit warm. It's okay. Do your best. If it's really too warm, though, if it's really warm in your house, you can always plop this on a tray and refrigerate it for a few minutes, okay, if you have some trouble. All right. Now. Lift this up and over your, your turkey breast and gently remove the plastic wrap. The purpose of the sausage is twofold, really. Um, and I came up with this idea years and years ago when my friend, who's a avid hunter, brought me a goose breast. And he said, I don't know if you can cook this or not, but if anybody can and make it delicious, it's going to be you. And I was like, okay, but it's really dry, isn't it? He's like, yeah, it's really lean. It's really dry. And they're hard to cook. And I was like, all right, well, what am I going to do? I grabbed a thing of breakfast sausage and did exactly this with the goose breast. And oh my gosh, it was so amazing. So when I thought about turkey wellington and i'm thinking what am i gonna wrap the turkey in i'm like oh sausage of course sausage not only does it pair well flavor wise it locks in all the juices provides some fat for this lean turkey breast and it's just delicious so you will never have a moisture turkey then if you do it this way i'm telling you it's just so so good all right we're gonna fold up this other end And then the last one. So it's like we're wrapping a package, right? Yeah, spread this out and just sort of mold it into the shape of your turkey breast. And that looks really good. Now, we can transfer this directly to a pan and get it roasted in an oven, I like to go on about 275 degrees, which is a low temperature. The reason for the low temperature is because I want the sausage to render its fat and to cook slowly. That way it's gonna have less chances of cracking open. If you blast it with high heat, you can shrink the sausage so quickly that it kind of cracks open and you end up with a kind of a mess. So go low and slow for this. Can take anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours though, okay? We want an internal temperature of at least 165 deep in the very middle where the stuffing is. That way you'll know everything else is cooked perfectly. All right, so this one can go directly into the oven. You do not need to refrigerate or freeze it, but you can. So if you wanted to do this part right now, let's say you wanted to make this a two-day process, you certainly can. You could just wrap it back up and put it in the refrigerator. It's perfectly fine. You can let it sit overnight. But what I like to do is roast it up and then put it in the refrigerator to chill several hours or overnight, okay? It's still a two-day two process if you do it that way, but you have a lot less to do on the day that you wanna serve it. And I think that's great for a recipe like this. It takes a little bit more time to prepare. Do this part first, get it roasted up in the refrigerator overnight. The next day, you're gonna wrap it in the puff pastry and bake it up, and oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. Now, to get this onto the sheet pan, we want to put that seam side up, okay? So I'm just going to roll it on just like that and then sort of 
reshape it. And there we go, ready for the oven. You don't even have to preheat your oven for this recipe, but you can, but it's such a low temperature, it doesn't matter. It's gonna go in and, uh, and cook at the 275 degrees for about 90 minutes or so. All right, so if you're unlucky enough to get your turkey in three pieces, then you're gonna want to change up the procedure just a little bit. This one's pretty much already like butterflied out um, from earlier, but you could even go through and sort of flatten it out a little bit more if you like. You just, you do want it to be a good inch and a half thick though, okay? Now same with these. These are a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna just gonna pound them out just a little bit. All right, that looks good. The idea is that you have two pieces that will sit on top of the first piece and create the stuffed turkey that then we encase in sausage. All right, so once you have your three pieces sort of the same thickness and so that they'll lay over each other and create you know, that turkey breast, now we're gonna grab our sausage out. So you don't wanna stuff it beforehand. We wanna get our sausage rolled out because you're gonna have to stuff it while it's on the sausage, okay? Once you have your sausage rolled out and you want to season your turkey pieces with a little bit of salt and pepper, now we're gonna assemble them. And trust me, when this first happened to me, I really felt like crying. I was so frustrated with this, but after trying it several different ways, this will work, okay? This is that one piece that's kind of all out and we're just gonna kind of spread it right there. Then we're gonna put our stuffing on top. There we go, that looks good. And then we're gonna take our pieces and we're just gonna kind of sit them right on top here. All right, that looks good, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry when things start to fall, they do that. This is why this next step is so important. So if you remember when I rolled the one um, that was intact, it held together, right? Because it had turkey all around it. It was just one little slit. It all held together beautifully. That is not gonna happen with this one. So it's a little bit different. We have to roll it in the sausage, keep it in the cling wrap and freeze it for 30 minutes. And that's gonna hold it all together before we put it in the oven. All right, so you can start on this end, which is what I recommended. You know, I started at the bottom on the other one because it didn't really matter. This one, I would definitely start by this with the sides here, lift it up and you kind of pull it over so it's holding everything together while you gently take your plastic wrap down. Any rollaways, just stick them back in, okay? Take the bottom up or the top, you can go whichever side you want. Put that up like that. Bring this up. And I hope you can see, this is falling apart. Don't worry about it, it's gonna be perfectly fine. All right, so once you have it like this, where you only have this other side to do, I recommend turning it so that this flap is facing you. So just go ahead and turn it right on your countertop, just like that. Bring it close to you if you can. Tuck those in. Make sure your saran wrap is not over your sausage now, okay? Tuck in your sides right here. And then you're gonna wanna lift your saran wrap up and really fold it over like that and keep going. Keep going and wrap it up just like that, see? All right, into the freezer for 30 minutes, then into the oven like I did with the other one at 275 for about 90 minutes or until it reaches 165 internally in the very center. And then the rest is exactly the same, okay? So no matter whether you have an intact turkey breast or pieces, you can still make this recipe successfully. Now, I can also freeze this for longer storage. So I could actually make this up, freeze it just like this, let it thaw in, in a month or two and make another Turkey Wellington.
All right, so once the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees, remove it from the oven. Now we need it to cool down. So what you wanna do is put this into the refrigerator. But if you wanna make your pan gravy, go ahead and take these juices and fat off of the tray before you refrigerate. It's just gonna make it easier. I mean, you could do it either way, but I usually do it before. So you could do that by removing the sausage wrapped turkey breast, putting it on your cutting board, pour the juices into a pan, and then put the uh, turkey back on the pan and put it in the refrigerator. Leave the turkey in the refrigerator for about three to four hours or until it's completely cool on the outside. It does not have to be completely cooled throughout. In fact, that'll speed up the next step if it's warm still in the middle. But you do wanna make sure that the outer part is cool to the touch so that your puff pastry doesn't start to melt when you wrap it. That just kind of makes it a mess. Now's a good time to get your puff pastry out of the freezer, unless you're making your own, which is also a delicious alternative to the box kind, which I usually make my own, but I figured most people are probably gonna use the frozen kind, so we're gonna do that today. And then we are gonna get it wrapped and get it baked up golden brown. Our sausage encased turkey breast is now cool to the touch. That takes at least two sometimes three hours, okay, in the refrigerator. You can also leave it overnight. If you leave it overnight, it's gonna be cold all the way through, which is perfectly fine. You're just gonna have to cook it longer in this next step, okay? So either way is perfectly fine. Mine's been in there probably about six hours and I took it out about 30 minutes ago, so I'm gonna probably have to cook a little bit longer. If it is warm inside still, and just cool to the touch on the outside, usually the 25 minutes of cook time at 450 degrees Fahrenheit is enough to get the center back to 165. But it is gonna vary based on the temperature of the uh, turkey inside, okay? All right, now we're gonna roll out our puff pastry to actually turn this into a Wellington, okay? And I'm using some all-purpose flour just to put down on my surface here, I'm just gonna use my countertop, dry, flat, and it's large enough, so it makes it really easy. You're gonna need two of these puff pastry sheets, or you can make your own, which I encourage you to try at least once because, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And two come in a box, so you only need one box for this recipe. Then you're also gonna to want to have one egg with a tablespoon of water and whip that up into a little bowl. The reason why I use the water is to kind of dilute the egg. That dilutes the egg white and helps to prevent it from forming kind of a crust. The egg yolk is used to make that golden brown color and diluting it a little bit just, I don't know, I, it just works well for me. You don't have to dilute it with water, but I always do. All right, now we're gonna lay these kind of side by side. So we need this big enough to encase the entire turkey, but we also need it to go together. So I'm gonna to press these edges together. And I like to make sure nothing is sticking, maybe even put a little bit more flour down and flip this over because you really do not want your puff pastry to stick. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push these edges together on this side here, and now we're gonna roll it out. You want it to be about a quarter of an inch thick. And even though when you get it, it's pretty thin, it's still a little bit too thick. Maybe even an eighth of an inch would be a good target. Whoop, that means I'm sticking a little bit. So if that keeps happening, like I can feel it's a little tacky there, just sprinkled with a little bit of flour. Now this I don't have to roll out near as much as my homemade puff pastry. You wanna go for about the same size as we did with sausage, so about 16 by 20. So I just need to go a little bit further this way. And that should work. All right, that should work fine. Now, before you go any further, make sure that you can lift this up. And if it's sticking, we're gonna get a little more flour down right on the surface here. All right, now 
that. We want to take our chilled turkey breast. This is the bottom, the flat bottom. I usually put the rounded side down like this or like this. It doesn't really matter how you want to do it. It really makes no difference. And now we're going to kind of wrap it like a package, just like we did with the sausage, okay? So I'm going to come over with this side and go all the way over here. All right, now I've got some excess down here that I'm not going to need. So I'm going to grab a knife and just kind of trim that off. Same on this side, and I'll do it from here so you can actually hopefully see a little bit better what I'm doing. And that's just gonna prevent you from having a super thick layer of the puff pastry because we want it even all the way around, right? All right, now brush these edges with a little bit of your mixture here just like that. I bring this up and bring this up and press it in. Same for the other side. Now you might be able to get away with just one sheet. If you really made it thin, you, you might be able to, because I'm going to have a lot of excess that I'm going to um, just cut off. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, just kind of pull it up. I go around with my hand and just sort of tighten it to the turkey breast. And now look at all this excess that I have here, and I really won't need it. So you could turn it into something else though. I'm gonna cut it off just about here. So you could actually do something else with that if you wanted to. So just right here on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing and cut off the excess. I've made so many beef wellingtons in my life and honestly, the hardest part for me is always wrapping them. And then I started doing it this way and it's a lot easier. And uh, so I have really good success with this. It's pretty simple to do. I just think of it as a package. Let me, I'm gonna take off this here. And tuck that in and wrap this up and over. And then you do wanna make sure that these seal nicely. All right, that should be fine. And then I take a clean tray and just sort of move it over. I mean, it's really easy to move, it's not like fragile or anything. And then I just look at the top and just kind of make sure that it all looks good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Brush off any of that excess flour. And then baste it with your egg mixture all over. Make sure that you have your oven preheated to 450 degrees. If you're using convection, 425 should be okay. But you want this to go into a really hot oven for the first 20 to 25 minutes. Then we will lower the temperature to about 275, 300 until it is fully warm inside, back up to 165. Okay, now, final touches. There's a couple things you can do. You can just take your knife and make little decorations in the top, that's fine. You do wanna have a couple little holes uh, for the steam to escape. You could make a little decoration down the middle and then take little cookie cutters, use your excess, cut out little shapes, stick them on top. That's really pretty. Or you can do what I do, which is super easy. I've got a turkey cookie cutter and I just set it down and I go all the way through. So just roll it over this top and make sure that it cuts all the way down to the sausage. If you see that it didn't cut all the way to the sausage somewhere, go around with your knife. Make sure you really get it all the way down to where you can see the sausage. What that does is separate this and it makes the prettiest decoration. Now, if you look on my picture, you're gonna see 
that the turkey's really dark, okay? I took a picture, I'd made this already and I took a picture of it before I did this video. And that was my mistake. I left the temperature too high for too long. So I had it in at 450 for like 30 some minutes. And um, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna fix that temperature so you don't end up with the top getting too dark like I did. I still thought it looked really cool and that's why I didn't mind putting the picture up. I thought it looked pretty cool. Okay, I'm just gonna get this back side here. Make sure it's basted all the way over. And there we go. We are ready for the oven. We've got our little turkey design. I think it is just so adorable. Now I'm gonna pop it in that preheated oven. We're gonna go for about 20 to 25 minutes, then we'll check on it and I will take an internal temperature and then we will turn the heat down and keep on going until it reaches the 165. I checked on the turkey at about 17 minutes in and it was golden brown and beautiful, but just like expected, the internal temp is still way below where we need it to be. It was like in the 60s, so you can tell mine's, mine was pretty cold. Um, anyway, so I turned down the heat to 275 and we're gonna keep on going. This can take anywhere from 30 more minutes to 60 more minutes. It really depends on the internal temperature of the turkey itself and the stuffing, okay? So how long you had it in the refrigerator. Since the temperature is so low still on the inside and it's absolutely gorgeous right now, I don't want it to become overly brown. So what I'm gonna do is tent it with some foil. So I pulled it out of the oven real quick and I'm not gonna wrap this foil tightly though because I do wanna have some air circulation. The only thing I'm trying to do is protect it from that direct heat. Kind of leave the sides open a little bit. All right, now it's gonna go back into the oven until the internal temp reaches 165. Even though the boneless um, turkey breasts come with a little gravy packet inside that you can make, I kind of like to make my own from the skin of the turkey. So if you remember when I removed the skin earlier, I just had it in the refrigerator. Now I'm gonna put about a quarter teaspoon of pepper on it and about a quarter teaspoon of the salt, which is fine grind sea salt or you could use a kosher salt, that's fine. Then I'm gonna have a little pan here on my stove. I'm gonna put it on medium heat and just stick the turkey skin in there. We're gonna let it render a little bit of the fat and juices and I'm gonna add in some chicken broth, a little bit of thyme and then we will get to making our pan gravy with those delicious juices and the fat from the sausage that we took off the tray earlier. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Look at that. Oh. All right, let me get it off of here. Now, you don't have to let it rest or anything. You can cut right into it because it's already was cooked, you know, earlier and then cold and then reheated. I will tell you that it took a total of, let's say 75 minutes. Um, 75 to 80 minutes for it to get back up to 165. So definitely plan on an hour and a half to two hours. And if you refrigerate your uh, turkey after you cook it with the sausage, if you refrigerate it overnight, take it out about an hour before you're gonna bake it and that's gonna speed up the process a little bit. There we go. All right, perfect. Now, one of the things that I'm kind of like a pet peeve of mine is undercooked puff pastry. And sometimes on the bottom, it can be like that, but it's not. It is nicely cooked. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And that is because we did that high heat for a short period of time and then a lower heat for a long period of time to heat it all through. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna cut it straight down the middle so that you can see. Although I hate to mess up my, my turkey decoration. Maybe I should cut it right here. Look, 
Now, if that doesn't look like Thanksgiving, I don't know what does. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is the one that was mostly intact, okay? So you can see that it, the turkey wraps all the way around. It's a little thinner on the bottom, that's fine. But the other one's gonna look pretty much the same. So don't worry about it if yours is one that came in pieces. Just do it like I showed you. All right, let's take a little slice here. In fact, I'm gonna take a little slice from the back end. And the reason being is because I do wanna show you, although we did a pretty good job this time, sometimes the end piece doesn't have a lot of turkey in it. It has more sausage, but look, that looks good to me. Now, ordinarily, I would make these slices a lot thinner, okay? So half of this size would be one slice for a person. You can easily get six to eight servings out of this. Now, we made this gravy, so let me go ahead and put a little bit of gravy on it. Just mix it up a little bit. Not too much. There we go. This is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous oh my gosh now okay what is the one thing about turkey breast right that it's usually really on the dry side mm -mm. Hm. oh my gosh this is so good wow the turkey almost melts in your mouth it's almost like I sous vide it okay and that's because it was wrapped in that Sausage, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And the cranberries add just a little bit of tartness to everything. Mmm. And they pair perfectly with the sweet apples. Oh my gosh. I love this. Now, if you're not a fan of cranberries, just omit it, okay? Omit the cranberries altogether. Now, I'm just gonna take a little piece of this here. Mmm, perfectly cooked. Oh my gosh. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's absolute perfection.